Man, uh, so much, so much stuff to get to today, but let's go ahead and get right into the news. Stop the music. It's time for news. Let's head over to the drone newsroom and see what's happening in the world of drones. Everything you'd ever want to know is Jeff Hills. Good stuff, man. We got lots of great news for you guys this week. Um, we'll start it off with something that's fresh in everybody's mind. Uh, DJI drones helped track and stop the Notre Dame fire. That's right. And this is our buddy Ash Ha. He does uh, droning on a YouTube channel. There's a link in the description. And uh, here's an excerpt from his latest video. Just a few days ago, the beautiful Notre Dame Cathedral in France was burnt to the ground, but it could have been a lot worse. Drones have been dragged through the mud in the press and media in recent news stories. Out of this story comes a positive bit of news. This beautiful historical building in the centre of Paris, the French capital, which dates back to 1160, was severely damaged by a fire. And elements such as the roof, the beautiful spire and the stained glass windows, plus the old pipe organ, were catastrophic catastrophically damaged, which of course is incredibly sad. Firefighters obviously rushed to the scene to do their best and normally would be deploying a helicopter, but on this occasion they actually deployed drones, thanks to the Ministry of Culture, who had a DJI Mavic and also a Matrix M210. Now, the drones that they had available, the Mavic and the Matrix M210, didn't have any thermal imaging capabilities, but still, due to their high-resolution cameras, they were able to guide the fire brigade to the most key parts of the fire so that they could fight the blaze as effectively and efficiently as possible possible. The spokesman for the fire brigade in Paris called Gabriel Plus stated that the drone viewpoint provided a live aerial view allowing more efficient positioning of the fire hoses and also improving their strategy for fighting the flames plus a more flexible option too. Now, as we all very well know, DJI no-fly zones will normally prevent you flying in the centre of a city like Paris, but DJI do have an unlock facility for enterprise and professional consumers, as well as regular consumers as well. The unlock feature allows you to request access to fly in an area that's normally protected by a no-fly zone, such as Paris. So, in the midst of this horrible news story, at least drones were there to make it a little bit better, because potentially it could have been significantly worse and the flames could still be right now yeah as as that's that's a shame that's a shame and uh hopefully you know everybody is gathering together to, to send them money and they are going to get it fixed and luckily the stone of the building was undamaged but listening to yeah. listening listening to him as americans doesn't an english accent just lend a little bit of credibility to any news story <laughs> i mean ash could have been like yes today ladies and gentlemen Pigs have actually started flying. Now back to you in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it probably would have a lot, been a lot better than, you know, the, the, the Texan guy going, yeah, oh, Notre Dame, they had a drone that helped everything. Just so, a quick yeah. question, and this is nothing against my Southern friends. We've talked about this on our morning show, by the way. Uh, Kelly here, uh, we, we did a morning show together on the radio. Yeah. Kelly, would you rather have brain surgery from this guy, hi, I'm your, I'm your doctor. I'm about to perform brain surgery on you and everything's gonna be okay. Or would you rather have brain surgery from this guy? Hey, look, you gonna be all right. I'm just gonna get up in there. Look, you little thing, I'm gonna cut you open. You're gonna be okay. I'm gonna get her done. Now, wait a minute, you gotta use the music anytime you talk like that. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, hold on. <laughs> where, where is my, where is the, hold on, hold on. I got special music for this. Okay, all right. Look, everything's going to be all right. Don't you worry about a thing. I've done this twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the former, not the latter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. So next in the news, uh, a nature photographer uh, was photographing a coastal sludge near uh, a town, and he noticed that a bird was stuck out in the wood, or out in the mud. So with the assistance of firefighters, he climbed out there and got it. Yeah, this is a mess. And that's that's deep, deep mud. Poor thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it had been thrashing around out in the mud, and it was uh, like molasses. The stuff was, like, really thick. The firefighters had a rope on him to be able to pull him back. When he got out there, the bird actually attacked him. Well, I mean, I probably would, too. I Just your natural instinct as a bird. You know, people eat but birds, Jeff. 
No. Yeah, and birds know this. Birds are aware <laughs> uh, that they're delicious. Birds know it. I'm yeah. not sure how many eagles get, you know, get harvested for their food, but okay. Oh, I'm sure some hungry mountain dude ate an eagle once. <laughs> well, eagle burgers. It just they had a they had a drone there that got some amazing footage of this rescue, which I thought was uh, notably uh, newsworthy. Yes, absolutely, and we're all glad that the eagle is doing a lot better now. They called him Icarus. Wait a minute, what are they doing right there? They're preparing him for dinner. It looks like they're getting ready to fry him up. Yeah, they're gonna they're they're rubbing some uh, some Dale seasoning. <laughs> If you don't know Barbecue. what Dale's is, you're not from the South. <laughs> Give me the little Dale season. All right, just a quick aside. Kelly, what do you think an eagle tastes like? <laughs> if if you were given special dispensation to eat one eagle, how would you prepare it? <laughs> oh, oh, you got to fry it. We're from the South. We fry yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. You so, fry it. Right, right. But you know what it's like? It's going to taste a little bit like chicken, but it's going to be the most amazing patriotic chicken you've ever tasted in your life yes yes i think i might get some red white red white and blue food coloring <laughs> i work i work all week on the news for this, <laughs> this it's okay this is what i get let's get serious let's get serious let's get serious so all the right. police uh released a video recently uh they used the FLIR version of one of the dji drones uh, well, to help years nab ago, a this felony might suspect. look like something you'd only see in a movie. But the Janesville Police Department says using drones to make arrests is something that's becoming more and more common. So the drone can cover a lot more ground much quicker than officers could on foot, particularly at night. You see uh, different heat signatures, and they, they appear in red initially on the video. As the, as the drone operator flies around, you can see anything that's given off heat, um, like a body. Sheridan says this isn't just more efficient, it's safer for the people on the ground. From a safety aspect, being able to direct officers in, tell them exactly where to go, be careful when they come around certain corners, stuff like that, it, it just increases officer safety, you know, 100%. He says more departments like Janesville are starting to buy drones in hopes it can help with situations just like this one this week. In the meantime, Deputy Chief Sheridan has a message for anyone thinking they can use the dark of night to escape from his officers. You can't hide from the heat that's coming off your body, regardless of where you're at. So, I mean, we have this tool available and we'll use it to, you know, uh, the best we can. Yeah, more and more police departments are using drones for all kinds of things. In fact, uh, in the beginning of uh, May 13th, I'm heading down to Texas to meet up with Chris Rollins and Kelly from Ready, Set, Drone. We're gonna. We're going to meet the new Matrice drone at a police department down there. And we're going to blow some stuff up, too. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Google, of course, has been in the news talking about drone deliveries. And we know that uh, it's coming. Eventually, Amazon and stuff's going to be delivering to our house. But the one thing that has always bugged me is that when the drone shows up outside and it's ready to deliver the package, how if I'm not here... How do I make sure that that package isn't going to get nabbed? This one startup is building a smart mailbox for oh. drone deliveries. Looks pretty good. All right, so drone comes in with the package, lands on the mailbox. Hopefully the spilling blades of death haven't lopped any little kids' faces off. Because, you know, little kids love drones. They'll be like, oh, what's that? And then, oh, that's a lot of moving parts, man. Yeah. And yeah. then, and then uh, of course, it has to fly off and not hit that tree. So, yep. I don't see anything that could possibly go wrong there. <laughs> Does drone delivery ever become a reality? Come back. No, come back in. <laughs> come back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will, but there'll have yeah. to be a whole infrastructure built. Yeah. And the mailbox yeah, the mailbox isn't going to be vital organ high. <laughs> It'll be, you know what I mean? It'll be, what? it's not going to slice and dice the neighbor's kids. It'll be out of reach. It'll be on your roof. It'll be on the top of flagpoles. Like uh, Google is, they've been submitting so many patents, Google, 
Uh, you can look up at the patent office and see what they're up to. They're submitting patents for pole top, existing uh, pole, pole top chargers for drones, all kinds of interesting things. Can we but, start a rock band called Vital Organ High? <laughs> Vital Organ High. <laughs> That's a great name for a band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so uh, back into the news. Oh, wait. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Jeff. Uh, we, we have breaking news. Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, it's a new video from Johnny <laughs> FPV, baby. This is new footage. Yes, her indeed. This is real. This is not fake. This is not a video game. This is real. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm losing my mind. This is crazy. Look at that stuff. Now back to you. That is video game if I've ever seen video I game. I am never, ever sending you any more links. <laughs> I can see Mario and Baby Peach driving those cars if you look closely <laughs> in the window. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in Ireland, the Garde, uh, which is their police department, has caught a man in his 40s, found to be in the possession of a drone being uh, flown near one of the prisons. Oh, dear. Yeah, he was attempting to use his drone to deliver two mobile phones, a watch phone, 440 tablets of cannabis, and uh, I guess an assortment of other wait items a minute, wait. that really didn't need to belong there. Cannabis comes in tablet form? Apparently, yeah. Are they suppositories? <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to know. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things in the news that I just read. You know, and then I don't ask. You know that somewhere in the world there is a cannabis suppository and a really relaxed weirdo that uses them. Oh, there, dude, somewhere there's a dude that just got done finishing his his Eagle Burger dinner, and then he's like, "You know what? That was a little much for me. A little much on the tum tum. I'm gonna have to mellow out with some." Marijuana suppositories. Oh. Wow, we have gone downhill <laughs> in the news today. I apologize to everybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, by the way, uh, ju on. just very quickly, I do want to, in all seriousness, I want to remind everybody in the chat to please choose live chat. There's two choices. For some reason, YouTube will default to top chat, which means you're going to miss some of the stuff, and that's important when we start giving stuff away here so choose live chat yes yeah. and we need to remind people don't eat eagles don't Please don't eat an eagle don't eat eagles ken and Stop. i have tried them many times and they're not <clears throat> even that good yeah the first dozen eagles <laughs> they they go down rough <laughs> dude we're totally you, what? <laughs> you two it's just you two we're gonna have okay. we're gonna get contacted by someone what's what's the, that that group that goes the, the animals was it what's the animal group Peter, Green, yeah. Peter. Peter. <laughs> Sorry, Peter. All right. Yeah. So in Denmark, uh, the EU rules governing uh, marine ships, you know, that, that go through uh, the areas in Denmark. There's a big problem with uh, ships throwing trash and garbage and stuff over the, overboard. So they've come up with a way of using a drone to be able to fly out and essentially sniff sulfur to find out what ships are essentially breaking the rules. Well, I'm glad a drone's doing it. Not me. <laughs> Suppositories to fart jokes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I am the news guy. Leave the comedy to the professionals, Jeff. You just stick to the news desk, Skippy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this particular drone can fly long distances out over the ocean to uh, basically sniff out each ship, find out which ones are breaking the rules, and then report back so that they can be held accountable for dropping stuff in the ocean. Not okay, to. all right. Real-world scenario, here's, here's what happens. They, they send this weird drone out, right? And then, and then say it, it detects a ship that has bad things on it. Then, of course, the police boat has to go out and then get up there and they're talking to the captain and they're like, uh, can we talk to the captain? Captain comes out. What is it? What happened? Well, you see, we, uh, what we did was we got a drone and uh, we, we sniffed your ship. The captain's like, sniffed uh -huh. your what? Sniffed your what? Uh huh. We, we sniffed your ship and your ship, ship. didn't smell right. So we're going to have to fine you. You, so you say, you say my, my ship didn't smell right? Are you saying, because I'm pretty sure that my ship don't stink. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. And good night. I'm out. That's it. Peace. Show over. All right. I'd like to thank our writing staff. <laughs> okay, so going back to the news, uh, Chula Vista Police Department have come up with a unique way of using drones. Um, when they get called for a crime in a certain area, they actually will send the drones out in advance of the police department or the police officers showing up at the scene to provide the police officers the ability to see what's happening before they get there. Oh, that's really, really cool. Police typically use drones after a crime has happened, but this drone is being sent out ahead of officers responding to a call. It's a game changer for law enforcement. The situation. Uh, Since October, this drone has assisted the Chula Vista, California Police Department in making more than 50 arrests. The officers are able to use their department issued phones and see a live feed. The supervisors do the same thing from the field, and then it gives somebody like myself, the watch commander, a front row seat to what's going on. Right now, most drones can only be flown within the operator's line of sight. But as part of the integration pilot program, the Federal Aviation Administration has granted the first ever authorization for police to fly a drone beyond the line of sight for proactive emergency response, giving Chula Vista PD a 40-mile flying radius. So currently we're flying to the area of uh, Guaba Avenue and D Street. This officer is directing the drone from a room in the basement. It's an off-the-shelf drone with software from a company called CAPE. The drone gets launched from this pad here on the roof, navigated remotely to the scene, but there's still a pilot here to see if there's any obstruction. If there's a manned aircraft or flock of birds, he can manually override. The drone went over. Officers say what they see from the live stream is crucial, especially given how much scrutiny is on law enforcement right now. Can they look in your window? What's to stop a police department from using the drone similarly <laughs> for other purposes like surveillance? Well, your policies and procedures should be in place to stipulate that it's not utilized for surveillance or to go and in, invade people's uh, personal privacy. Stop it. No. I, just, no. I just wrote about 10 jokes in my head just now. I always wonder what happened to Rue McLanahan. <laughs> oh, my God. No. <laughs> oh. I was thinking, can they look in your window? Not your window. <laughs> <laughs> I got giggle juice tonight. I don't know what's wrong. Sorry, Jeff. I'm so sorry. Mm. Mm. I mean. <clears throat> All right. So the last one is going to, I guess, uh, it's something that people have been talking about quite a bit. But it also opens up uh, some interesting, I guess, questions. So we know that the last show... I guess it was the night of the last show that it was reported that there was a drone scene buzzing over Fenway Park during one of the baseball games that the Red Sox were having. Yeah. This and we know strange. that it was there. They caught video of this thing flying. Um, a drone hovering over the field during the late innings. Now, the FAA is investigating to see if the drone was authorized to fly over Fenway, but we also know that a representative for the Red Sox said it was not authorized and that the team has reported it to Boston police. Huh. Yeah, didn't okay. it turn out to be a little kid or something? Yeah, so this is yeah, this is where the story gets a little bit more interesting. So the police department, the FBI, and uh, the FAA got involved and they were able to locate the drone. It belongs to a 14-year-old juvenile who was flying the drone over the park. Um, and of course, they've, you know, they've, they're going to be able to, I guess, pr prosecute at some point. But the thing is, this opens up a lot of questions. One, he's 14 years old. He's below the age that he would have been required to get a permit or get licensed, et cetera, mm -hmm. right? So how are they going to punish him, <clears throat> right? How, how do you how do you punish him for that because he's not a licensed drone pilot second of all he, you know he was breaking just about every single rule that we've got he's flying at night he's flying over crowds mm. he's flying in a in a no-fly zone which was a TFR that was in place how he got that drone which was that was obviously a DJI drone flying in a TFR and that didn't look like a phantom 2 or a phantom 1 which means that the drone possibly was modified to be able to fly there. Yeah, um, that that would imply that he knows that he's breaking the rules and not just being other, an ignorant uh, youngster. 
Yeah, and the rumor mill uh, right now is that they're, you know, of course he's a youngster, so there's not a way of being able to validate everything, but uh, there's enough, uh, I guess, word of mouth going on that he's been involved in other issues with that drone before. So this isn't the first time that he's gotten in trouble. Um, so the FAA has got themselves in a situation where how do you how do you prosecute this? What, do you, what are they going to do? It'd be very interesting to see how the rules apply to this particular scenario. Well, things like uh, this, when, when uh, minors <clears throat> break the law, it's very often the parents that are held culpable. You know, if, if a 14 year old broke a window with a baseball, then the parents would have to pay for the window and it would come out of his allowance. I'd say, first of all, take away his drone uh, <laughs> and not ever let him license a drone, like ever. Ever, ever, uh, you know, I mean, there's the punishment has to fit the crime. Yeah. You know, this is going to be an interesting case study, and I'm going to be very interested following along to see what the FAA does with this. Yeah. So Kelly, that's what I got for the news Kelly today. thoughts as a parent. What, what would you do if, if your kid did that? I mean, could the parents be prosecuted here? If my kid got me in that much trouble, I'm with Ken. You know, FAA says no drone license for life. You know, he's on a banned list. Oh, I'm being told uh, I have some new video on this story just coming in right now. I'll go and play oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, my adrenaline. It's too much. I can't handle it. That's too much visual input. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh the smoke. I don't know what to look at. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. Woo, baby. <sighs> I need, I need a breather. Yeah. Jeff, you, uh, you all right, buddy? <coughs> I am seriously <laughs> going to scrutinize what I send to you in the future. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, you know, thanks for, thanks for all the news. If you need more news, where can, where can people go for more news? Well, the drone uh, news goes into the drone book, and it also shows up on the drone wiki. And uh, obviously, we keep trying to give you guys the latest and greatest here on the, the channel each night or each uh, Thursday. And, and you're posting the news again from this on your channel as well. Yes. <clears throat> so you can segments from here and put it on my channel for people so to check be able that to out. catch. Uh, subscribe to Jeff's channel. There's links in the description. If you're wondering what drone book is, it's like Facebook for drones. What moron yeah. just named that? It pretty much stole Facebook name. <laughs> Who would have done that? <laughs> no idea. <laughs> anyway, good talking to you now. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. Ah, uh, Jeff. He's the best, isn't he? He's awesome, man. He does a terrific job. He does.